everyone, this is Gally and we're doing wings in this how to draw your dragon tutorial. This time I did a lot of research behind wings. I've done them before but I do find them quite completely and absolutely difficult to draw. Why? Well because they're like hands in a way and hands, we all know hands are not easy. So, as wings are almost the same thing, and dragons can have bat wings, bird wings, and whatnot. Um, well, I decided to do like an overview on wings, like about the position of them. Mm, the, maybe not the bones, but the structure behind them and the muscles. So, we'll do the bones as well if you want. But we'll start first with a little drawing. Well, it's not a drawing, it's a picture I got from the internet. And it's a bat wing. And I wanted to make a little drawing on top of it to illustrate what I mean with, with this. So I don't know why it's not working. Oh, I see why it is not working. Wait a second. Ta da! I turned on my Bluetooth. So, ta da! Here, imagine instead of the bad buddy, just imagine we have the dragon buddy. His neck would be here. His torso here, yeah, and this would be the wing muscle. And remember, in the other videos, we talked about the hinges like this is the base, then the hinge, then the arm. As you can see, this is the elbow, the wrist. Yes, a very teeny tiny thumb that you can change it. And these are the fingers the middle finger, the ring finger. If a bat could wear rings, that would be funny, and the little finger, which is not little at all. As you can see, he has a membrane that it's so thin, but at the same time really resistant and it helps him fly. And now you can see that the bat has the wing connected to his little tiny foot. But we're not going to do that with the dragon, because dragons don't have tiny feet like this. Or maybe they do and they will look adorable, but not, not this one. So in this case it will connect to the base of the tail. Here. And here. Probably should change color. Can you see this better? No, it looks terrible. Wait a second. This is the base. This is the elbow. This is the wrist. Yeah. And this is where it connects to the tail and where it connects to the shoulder. And now we can erase the bat and you can see the dragon before you. So, this is a really quick illustration so you understand what I did with the rest of the drawings that you'll see in this video. So, we are advancing on a different level. You can pause the video at any time to draw this and copy it, but I'm not going to pause because the video will last an hour and that will be really long. So for the first of our dragons, we have a roaring dragon here and he is not happy. As you can see, he's, he's probably just snarling at somebody. He's, he's angry. Yes. And he's going to throw fire too. But that's not the point. As you can see, this is his neck, his torso, right here, his hips, and his legs. So the wings would connect to this part of his torso. He's a wavern. Remember the first video? The waverns don't have hands. They don't have hands. Like this. <laughs> no, they don't have this. They only have wings, and their wings are like hands, and that's exactly why, as you will see here, he has a base, yeah, the elbow, the wrist, and the wing hand. Yeah, we'll call it wing hand. And he has a thumb, and he has fingers like the bat. So, finger one, finger two, finger three maybe. There are different kind of, of kinds of, of fingers of dragons. As you can see, this one doesn't have another finger here, although he could have it. He's going to have an elbow finger, which is highly debated whether they could have those kinds of, um, of fingers. Would they work or not? I personally love those things. And I think it would work if it were flexible enough for the wings to move. So as we can see, he has his wings would connect to here in this case. But if you're trying to go for a different dragon style, a more stable one, you can draw his tail. Just imagine his tail like this, and we'll change colors again. 
This part of the tail will be the base. Remember the base in the, in the other one? And it will connect to this little other thing. So we'll go here. Just imagine it connecting like so. And the only thing you will see is this. Not this, because it's covered. So you only see this. I know it might look a little complicated right now, don't even worry about it. So, this is a very complicated drawing, in fact. I started with the most complicated, but don't feel bad about that. So the other one will go here. Change the yellow again. Hinge. Shoulder. Elbow. Wrist. Wing hand. And another thumb. And fingers. Yeah? That's our first example, again. And you'll see... This is a complicated pose, looking in front which makes it harder to draw, and I know because I've tried, and you should use reference on anything you can find. I use reference for this. I'm not perfect, and I'm not a super talented person who can draw any dragon without looking it up. No, that's a myth. And if it does exist, they probably draw the same dragon over and over because it's not that easy. You should find inspiration in anything, and as I was telling you, Let's check on some artists. This time I'm going to call out Sky Sealer in DeviantArt. She is a very talented artist I admire since I was like 13 years old and I'm 24. So 11 years admiring that girl. And she is older than me. She draws dragons and other beasts, but dragons are her forte, I think. And I really admire the way she draws wings and poses. And I link her here to her website, her DeviantArt. She has Tumblr and I don't think she has a YouTube, but she has Picardo or something like that. So she can show her drawings while she makes them sometimes. And I commissioned her my Galidor um, reference sheet, which is the most beautiful thing in the world. Probably I have it here. ta -da! You can probably see just a little piece. It's a little part because I'm only recording a little bit of my screen, but you can see this gorgeous little beast. It's my baby and she drew it. So now let's keep going with wings. This time we're going to check a different cuter dragon. And you'll see he's a very adorable tiny thing. And if you don't understand this little body, he has his face, he's looking front. He's like, hey, I'm so happy to be here. So this is his head, his neck, his chest, his arms, which we'll do in a different tutorial, so they will remain like circles for now. And his tail. But the wings, he has unfolded. And this is the same purpose and the same thing as the other. The hinge, the elbow, the wrist, the fingers. But now we're taking them in a folded stance. So this will go like this. He has the hinge, yeah? The elbow will go here, which is the hinge, the elbow, and the wrist right here. So now you go with the first finger. Poor dragon, I just drew on top of him. And the rest of the fingers. So yeah, aside from my scribbling on top of my sketch, you can see what I'm trying to do here. Like, the elbow is hidden behind these fingers. Yeah, so you wouldn't see this. It's covered with the red thing. And for the other side of the wing, you get a different uh, view. I'll do it over here. So you get the hinge, the elbow, the wrist, the thumb, and the fingers. And there's something like this. Yeah, and in this one you can see the arms of the wing. And the membrane, uh, it covers all of it. It covers the rest of the wings. So the pointy parts can be seen here, but the rest is covered and the membrane sticks to the base of the tail. Just like that. Mm -hmm. So to do a basic drawing without you getting confused, the easy part. Wings, hinges, elbows, wrists. Repeat this as many times as you want, it helps a lot. Think of it as this, it's, it's really simple. My dragon has wings like this. These are like, um, how do 
body full of cartilage. Cartilage? Yeah, whatever. And then he goes like this. But you don't need to add that to your characters. And I just erase the fingers. Okay. But you can do the pterodactyl kind of wing, which is well, pretty much this beauty. But like this. Yeah, it's the easiest wing, I think. And there are many, many kinds of wings. But this one, it's simple. And it's a pterodactyl wing. It's plausible, you know, they did exist. So you can probably grab inspiration from them as well. Okay, so back to another dragon. This time, this dragon has. Oh, background! An extended wing. I just moved the background. Oh, again! Oh, oh. It doesn't like me. It doesn't like me at all. My background hates me. Yeah, this is a dragon. Okay. So, we have this dragon back to the misbehaving background. Thank you. So, <clears throat> back to our dragon. This has an extended wing. It's the easiest one to draw, in my opinion. Because you can see it clearly. The hinge, the elbow, the wrist, say it with me, the hand, finger, and then other fingers. This is a thumb, sorry. And the other fingers. Thumbs are fingers. Yeah. So, I tend to bubble a lot by I draw. So this is the arms, and they're attached to his beautiful round chest. And this would be his tail, so you attach it to his tail, like this. Yeah. Why does he only have one wing, he asks. He's not happy with that. You see the membrane here, connecting to the hand. I won't give you very complicated names of biology or stuff, but this is a ligament. Yay. It's a ligament. What the ligament does is it, it prevents the wing from overstretching. So it helps the dragon fly and the wing doesn't go, well, overboard. And well, now this is the elbow joint. And the elbow and wrists only allow movement to extend and fold the wing. And it doesn't move up and down. This just like helps it, you know, open and, and close. And the wing is held straight out, it, fo it forms a rigid surface. If the wing were like this, you know, the, the hinge and the elbow, and like this, you will see the wing like this. The elbow, this is the wrist. Sorry, probably drawing it a little weird. Whatever. This is what happens, the, the joint makes it stable, makes a line, and help, hurt. it's like a rigid Thing, think of a, not a table, but of the sails on a boat. You know, the, the boat. La, la, I don't draw boats at all. Sorry about that. When the sail is like this and the wind goes here, wee, the sail tenses up and makes a rigid surface and it helps a little boat move. It's exactly the same thing with the dragon. The wind comes in this direction, this thing tenses up, helps him fly, and he is ready to go. Mm, and what else can I show you? I think that the wrist joint, it's different, it goes in the front and they're extended when the bird or the dragon is in flight and when it stops flying the wrists bend sharply and what it is is like you have the wind here, right? And the elbow and the wrist. And it could be here, like this. But what happens when the bird or our little bat or dragon tries to to stop? What happens is this falls like this. And even closer to the body. Like it would probably go like this and like this. Yeah? So it will fold against his body so he wouldn't have to move with trouble because the wings are very big. And as they work like sails, you need to tuck them up. You need to make this happen. So the wind doesn't stop from blowing it and, and he can move, you know? When a dragon wants to walk, they don't have their wings extended. That would be really uncomfortable for one, if they were real. And if they suffered from that. We're going now to a different dragon, this time. It's a bird wing dragon. 
yeah you don't see a dragon here i know this is a bird wing i got from my other tutorial i made when i was probably three years back i think i made a dragon wing tutorial i probably would link it in the description this is more complete but i'll do it anyway and you can see this is a bird wing these feathers have different names the flight feathers would be this and there are primary and secondary feathers and and such. We can still learn that if you want. But I I will just show you this for now. There are many sections in the wings. This is the base that goes connected to the muscle. This is the first one. It connects to the muscle. This would be the muscle. This would be the finger joint and this would be like the other bone. And this would be another bone. Sorry, this probably doesn't go so long. It might go like this. Yeah, and then like this. So, again, base, elbow, wrist. I'm not tired of saying that. I never be. So, this is the breast muscle. Yeah. The shoulder joint. The elbow joint. The wrist joint. And we have all the other feathers connected to that. And feathers would look probably like a stick. And then a long fan like this. And these things are here. This, this feather, is connected to the bone. Just like every other feather. And this just help cushion the flight and make it better for each bird. And there are many, many different kinds of birds. So I'm sorry if I'm not drawing every kind of wing, but that would take me forever. This is just like well, a quick overview on feathers. And if you really want a feather wing tutorial, I can make it. Just let me know in the comments. But this is an overview of wings, so I'm just doing this kind of thing. So this time, another dragon. This is a, another complicated pose. Yeah. So our dragon now is looking this way. He's probably singing something. And he's happy. And he's a wavern as well, but you can make him another handed dragon adding hands to him. Ta da! He has hands now. Woohoo! So, you can see the wings here. They have the same structures as the other ones. And you're probably hearing me in your head telling you base, elbow, and wrist. You're going to dream about this today. So you have the fingers like this. And we see a very interesting thing happen here. See this finger? Yeah? It goes all the way here. Well, you see the membrane. It covers it. It goes like this, but it covers it. So that's the interesting part about dragon wings. Is that, well, the membranes play a very important part for flight, but it also looks different. It won't look, I don't know, without this it won't look normal. It would be a strange wing of a dragon based on a bat, because you can do many other kinds of wings. I won't blame you. If you're basing this on a bat, it's important to have these membranes. Think about them when you draw. If you still feel like you can't draw them, I just encourage you to try. And even if they look weird, you'll probably understand the physics of it later. And the membrane connects to the to the base of the tail. You can connect it here as well. Here. Probably here, but I wouldn't recommend that, as I said in my other videos. I wouldn't recommend it so close to the dragon body because the less space you have here, I will try to draw it. The less space there is in this area, if you only leave this and the wind comes, your dragon would have less stability in flight, less power to fly. It would take him quite more energy for him to lift himself up because his body is big and this well, would probably not support this dragon. And I enjoy making big wings because of that. Because the wind can help our dragon flow. And now we see the other wing, he's folding it up. This picture, I referenced it from a bat. As you can see, this thing was upside down. Just imagine a dragon hanging upside down. And, well, he's flying, so or jumping, so he won't have to be upside down. But you can see another membrane here. This is another membrane. The folding of the membrane. And the thing. 
fingers go like this, and the thumb goes here, and that's another simplified drawing of, of wings. That's just a sketch, but you can get the anatomy from this, so I hope it works for you. Also, pause it again if you need to copy or anything. Then we have another wing example. I took this also from the internet and drew over it to practice. It probably is not that clear, but you see the feathers. Remember the feathers I told you? The base ones, secondary ones, primary feathers, and they fold like like a. I was going to say a sombrero, but you probably think of a hat, a cape. You know, the hat goes like this on top of the person's face. Yeah, my terrible face. You see why I don't draw humans? <laughs> no, I do, but they suck. Okay, here goes. This is the... You guessed it. The wrist. The elbow. The base. It would be... This would be a membrane in the dragon... If it were a bat. This. Yeah. But this is feathered in a bird. So it's the same thing again. The membrane covers the fingers. Its joints are together. You probably have the wing like this. Yeah. And this is from the side. You can see it from the side as well, how it would look. Well, not really from the side, it's from the front. Just imagine your little dragon going like this. His neck. His chest. His wing. You probably have this other wing here. Dragons can have any kind of wings. Butterflies as well. That will be a different subject because butterfly wings are quite different. So we're just gonna stick with these two for the moment. Okay, now we're another dragon. And this is similar to the first one you saw. It's the same thing. Um, I leave this here for one second or two so you can analyze it. Pause the video if you need. I'll make it bigger. Let, let's make it bigger. And I suggest you take a screenshot of this, copy it in your computer, or hand draw it. That would be also okay. And try to, to draw over it, try to analyze different dragons, find dragon pictures and draw over them. That's absolutely helpful. It's not copying, it's not stealing, it's not plagiarism, as long as you don't take the image as is as and make it your own. You steal a drawing and think, oh, it's mine, I did that, that's not good. I'm not advocating that, no. I'm just letting you know that if you want to copy another artist's work for inspiration and to, to draw your dragons better and such, you can do that. That's completely fine, they do it as well, I can assure you. So, take this as reference. We're not gonna go into detail with this one, because you already saw one. So, now we have the side view, but this time it's folded. So here you have the, the wing muscle and our famous joints, the hand, the thumb, and the fingers. The tail can go any, anyway. You'll join it with the other fingers and the membranes. And the same goes for um, the back. I was requested to draw the back, so I'm drawing the back. I don't usually draw dragons facing this side because, well, you cannot see their face. As you can see, there's the muscles that connect the wings, and behind them there go different muscles. There will be the ribs right here. But this will be hidden because you'll draw the wings on top of them. Unless they're transparent and then you can see everything underneath. But the wings go like this, and then our joints. Unite them. Go here and here and the hand here and the fingers. So that's how it would look on the back. And you can fold them as much as you want, play with the fingers, try many different poses with the wings. There is no limit. And I know they're complicated, but analyze this, study it. It's it's just all there is. You just study, you practice, if you reference. I promise you in no time you will be 
making your own dragon wings and having a ton of fun with that because it's fun. I cannot deny it. It's fun. So now we go to a different and almost a last pose taken from a bat. And this has no body. So you can grab this and try to feel your own body on it. I give this to you as homework. Try to feel it in. Don't copy anything <laughs> from me. Just try to feel it in. Grab a bat. And that sounds really funny. Grab a bat. The animal. Not Batman. Not a wooden bat. No. Grab the animal. Grab the wings. Photoshop them out. Draw on top of them. And make your own dragon. Try to fix the body where it would be. I'm just giving you a tip. Don't copy. I just told you to copy other artists. But not this one. Not specifically this one. I want you to make your own dragon. Yeah, that's just an idea, but please don't copy this. Make your own. Make your own, have fun with the wings and learn them and study them and have fun. And now, for a treat I made for you, let's show you how a dragon's wings would look in flight. It's a step by step, it's not animated yet, and I probably won't animate it because it takes a while. You can see the first pose would be this, and then we have a different pose here. What happened to this thing? I don't know. Oh, here. Yeah. You see how it will start looking? What is this? Oh, wait. Did we already draw this? This was the first drawing. What is it doing here? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Things like this happen all the time. Wait. Okay. So, this is our next drawing. And you see how the wings will start folding on themselves and I'll make them smaller so the other ones fit so you see the poses I'll make this smaller as well and wait a second I was sure I had six layers of dragon wings but apparently I don't Hmm, that's weird. Okay. Whatever. We don't need a six layer. No, we kind of do. Let me find it. Oh, there it is. Here it is. It's alive. Yippee, I did not lose it. Here it goes. Ta-da! The treat for you guys. This is a uh, Dragon in Flight. Taken from a bad video. You see, I take it from the internet as well. I don't think I'd make this up. I don't think I could anyway. It's better to observe and learn than just imagine it and do it. Because yes, you can imagine and do it. There's no shame in using reference, I repeat. No shame in using reference. And this is how a dragon would look flying. You can also learn from this. You can copy it. Try to animate your own, that would be amazing. And show it to me. That would be so great. <clears throat> so, this is all. This is all for the dragon wing tutorial. I try to, to edit this as fast as I can, so you guys can have the full thing soon enough. And I really hope you liked it. Please subscribe and leave comments. I really enjoy comments. If this makes you happy, this made you happy, please show it to someone else. And if someone wants to start drawing dragons, show them the rest of the videos. Hope they help. And check out Sky Sealer. And thank you all for well for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And more to come. Bye bye.